Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The case of the angry engineer. Please forgive this voice as Ray lost his voice this week. During a bitter cold snap, we received a call that one area of the school building was cold. I sent a technician to help diagnose the issue. The first thing he noticed was a wide temperature drop or delta T between the system supply and return pipes. This usually indicates insufficient flow or high heat load. Tracing the piping, he determined the flow was too low. As a backstory, the technician was often condescending and brash. He believed he was the smartest person in the room. This usually had a polarizing effect on customers. When satisfied with his diagnosis, he informed the maintenance director the pump was undersized and should be replaced with a larger pump. As a stopgap, he increased the boiler water temperature from 180 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, because he couldn't help himself, told the maintenance director the engineer didn't know what he was doing. When the tech left, the director of maintenance called the superintendent and informed her of what my tech found. The superintendent called the architect, who in turn called the mechanical engineer who in turn called me. He was not happy. Between cursing and the threat of a lawsuit for slander, it was not a good morning. I apologized and said I would look into the matter. I called the technician and asked what happened. His response was the engineer undersized the circulating pump and went on to talk about how engineers didn't know anything about heating. My day was going from bad to worse when the director of maintenance called and informed me there was a meeting at the school the next morning. The architect, engineer, superintendent, and the maintenance director would be there and they wanted me there as well. The tension was high as I entered the meeting room. I introduced myself and the mechanical engineer shunned me and nodded. We are all here to find a solution to our problem and not find fault, the superintendent declared. I wasn't sure the architect and engineer felt the same. The engineer spread out drawings on the conference table and went over his design calculations for the pump. When done with the meeting, we all walked to the boiler room. We reviewed the temperature drop for the zone and the engineer agreed it could be low flow. I looked at the pump and realized it was not the pump the engineer had specified. This brought an air of relief to the engineer and architect when I told them that. Everyone speculated how this could have happened. Just then, one of the maintenance techs walked in holding a pump. We all turned to look at him and he nodded. Where is that pump for? The maintenance director asked and he pointed to the one in question. I put that one in temporarily while this was being rebuilt. Don't you remember? The tech asked. The maintenance director nodded slowly. Once the original pump was reinstalled, the cold area was once again warm. At the end, everyone smiled and we shook hands. I contacted the engineer a few weeks later asking if I could stop in and discuss my boilers with him. His response surprised me. You threw me under the bus with that customer and I will never ever specify your boilers. That was over 20 years ago and true to his word, he never did. It just goes to show how an errant word by an employee could affect your business. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have my two websites, the Brewing with Steam site has monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. I have written 11 books on boilers and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you could find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective and I hope to see you on the next case.